My name's Charlie and I'm six. My favourite thing uh, is mm, playing. Charlie's not unusual in preferring the playground to the classroom. But what can following six-year-old Charlie tell us about what works best for fun-loving, lively boys? Today it's a literacy project that's behind this trip out to a local beauty spot. With the help of child language and communication specialist Catherine Gibbs, we aim to find out how does Charlie learn? At last we have our picnic. Right, OK, well done. Back in class at Gray School, New Haven, teacher Ellie Clark Walker is focusing on narrative skills. Why do you think I picked this story for us to read this morning? Why oh, is this a good story? Because it's easy. It's easy? <laughs> yeah. Is it easy? Where did we go on Monday? We went on a trip, didn't we? We went on a walk. So in the guided reading session, Charlie was very active. It took him quite a long time to get settled. Charlie was quite interested in the, in the book and wanted to get on and have a look at it. So he found the sort of waiting to go through the title a little bit difficult. The story was about going for a picnic and they were going on a walk in a particular sequence. Charlie, will you read the next page for us? We'll see where they go when they've gone up the road. Go on, then off you go. At the Go to the park. Day. At the... Can you sound it out? End. End. He started to read the word gate, even though it wasn't there, and then sort of went back and said, oh, no, and sort of self-corrected and, and actually realised that the visual wasn't going to help him. All the way through that session, while he was reading, it's really obvious how much the visuals meant to him. That was where his first cue in was. And the other thing was that he was taking cues from other children all the time, looking and seeing what they were doing. He wasn't really as engaged as some of the other children were. Right, and here, Charlie, what we're going to talk about is where did those people go when they went to their picnic? We're going to see if we can try and draw their journey on the whiteboard. So where did their journey start? And at that point, he was completely engaged. He really wanted to do his map. It was an incredibly logically drawn map. And then he looked back to see what came after the road and Yes, it was a path, so he drew the path and then came the steps and so on, all the way around, and turning his board round so he could draw the cable cars. And he included the gate. He was the only one in the whole group who, who, who drew the gate in, because that was obviously quite a focus for him when he was reading the book. Now, done. Can you have a go at writing the words next to your picture then, Charlie? Charlie, so what have we got here? Where? Can you find roads in your book? Because that'll help with the letters, won't it? Find the word road for me. You know, he was really motivated. He wanted to find the words that went with his picture. So the motivation was much greater then when it was his his work and he wanted to find the word to write it down. And he got quite frustrated when he couldn't find gate because he knew he wanted to label his gate and that word wasn't in the book. It's a double L sound, two L sounds at the end. So then he just wrote it himself in his own way, um, which I thought was, was really good. He didn't just decide he didn't want to write that, he, he actually wrote that in. And really, he, of all the group, he was absolutely on task the whole time that he was doing the map. Have a go on your whiteboards, write me the word we. Oui. Um, so during the whiteboard activity where they were writing their keywords, Charlie was not terribly engaged in that. Now, I wonder if anybody can remember the trick for the next word. Um, when? He uses the other children as cues all the time, and so he was watching what the other children were doing. And it was very interesting that when they were asked to hold their work up, their whiteboard up, after each word was written, he didn't lift it up once in the whole session because he wasn't sure that he'd written it correctly, he didn't want to show it. You'd perhaps think that it would be easier to write because it's a whiteboard and it's non-threatening and they can rub it out, but in, in his case, he didn't, didn't seem to want to do that. On the board, I have written a recount. There are a few little gaps. 
What we're going to try and do is see if we can choose, Nassim, some of the words that are right at the bottom of the screen, and we're going to see if we can put them in their place. And Charlie just wasn't really engaged at all at that point. He was very, very mobile on the carpet, very fidgety. It might have been nice to have had them a bit more involved, maybe made it a bit more interactive. Perhaps the children um, having the cards with the words on so they could hold them up or going out to the, the whiteboard to, to point to where they wanted it to go. Just I think for Charlie particularly that would have been quite good because he would have had something to focus on. I would like you to see if you can tell me the whole journey. And yellow group children, go and find your table. Charlie's very good at queuing in, but he didn't really seem sure about how he was going to start. And so he was sort of looking at the others very much. And, and then when one of the other children started to write, he was very much looking around and copying what they were writing. So his first line was identical to everybody else's. And it's not just other children Charlie's using to help him write. First we lined up. You know, I knew how to write it because it's on the door. Well, that was a fantastic idea, wasn't it? It's on the door. And then we went outside. He was using the environment quite a lot. He was looking around to see where the words were on the wall. And then a bit later on, he saw um, the word Castle Hill on the, on the flip chart. And so at that point, he was very much beginning to think about what he was going to do, but quite distracted by the other children in the group. This is on your first one. So once Charlie got involved with the writing, he really was working quite independently. But he was also able to uh, join in with the work that was happening on the table. How do you spell work? The girl next door spelt it out for him, so they were all working in quite a nice collaborative way, and they were all quite engaged with that. Go, 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 so Charlie's writing um, shows that he's not really using punctuation naturally. It's not something that he would include. Whether he would include it in a different situation where he's not trying to think of what comes next all the time, I don't know, but certainly he, I didn't see any evidence of him being ready to use punctuation yet. He was actually using an awful lot of different skills because he was remembering his finger spaces and all the sort of constraints of writing, and the secretarial bit, if you like. But he was also sort of trying to remember what had happened, so he was remembering the events in order. And he was also trying to remember how to spell them, so an awful lot going on there while he was doing that writing. And I suspect that's why he was stopping and moving around quite a bit, because it's quite tiring. When you got to the top of Castle Hill, what did you see? I saw boats. So can you write about the boats? What else did you see? Did you spot the lighthouse? Yeah. Did you write about that as well, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, go on then. I'll come back and see how you're getting on in a minute. It was almost as if there was a sort of memory trigger, and, and it looked as if he was then going actually visually back to the walk because he was very concentrated then, as if he'd got a visual picture of where he'd been. The walk certainly gave Charlie plenty to think about. What the ways that we walked along to the lighthouse? Yeah, I went fishing across there before. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah there was the end, and then the lighthouse where I'd been fishing. Who did you go fishing with? My dad. Your dad? My sister didn't come, didn't she? I've almost done. I think. <laughs> Come on, look up there. Look up there. <laughs> look, across there. You have to press that button, and then it's yeah, that button, and then it's Georgie's turn, and then it's my turn again. 
and, and he was doing it in a very sequential way at that point. And clearly, on the walk, there were things that Charlie was interested in, namely the boat, the lighthouse, the tower, and the camera. And it's very interesting that they're the four things that he's put in his recount. Charlie, how much have you done? Two pages. Or almost. He was very pleased about the fact that he'd filled more than one page with his writing, which is a real positive, because if we can get children feeling positive about writing, then that's, that's great. He probably won't like mine that much at the moment, because I haven't done that much. And then when he had to do the pictures, he drew um, what he'd seen. So he drew the, the water and he drew the children in it. When you looked at what the other children on the table had written and were talking about and were doing, he wasn't really influenced by that at all at that point, which in, on other activities he had been very involved with what the other children were doing. The interesting thing when he drew his pictures was that the picture that he drew on the second page of his work, which was the, the tower that the lifeguards were in, was the same picture and drawn from the same angle as the tower that he'd drawn in the book when he'd been on the actual walk and I'd watched him draw it. And actually, when I compared the two after the lesson, they were almost identical, which I think is really interesting because it really illustrates how, what a visual learner he is. It illustrates how much his visual memory is helping him. Come on, then. When we went... went past, past the... Houses. I suspect that his reading isn't a natural process for him. It isn't something that he just finds easy, although he can, he can read. He's not that fluent yet. I got a... I got a turn with... with the camera. Well done, Charlie. Let's get Charlie clapped there. Well done. Well done. Good boy. He didn't see himself conscious that there were words that he came across that he couldn't quite remember what they were. I think you've worked really, really hard this morning, so I think you can all give yourselves a really big clap. Well done. It's an important lesson to remember that there are a lot of children like Charlie, particularly boys, who are very, very active learners. Clearly, you can engage them in writing, but it has to be done in a very, very careful and quite planned way. This lesson suited him quite well in that it was very much built on something that he'd experienced and probably engaged him to a greater extent than some other literacy lessons might have done. And the moments where he was less engaged were the more formal, and more passive moments in the lesson. He needs to have those very physical, very multi-sensory experiences. And I think, unless we've given children a good experience, they can really be sure about what they're doing when they go to write. They're thinking, well, can I see the point of this? Particularly for boys, they really need to be motivated. It needs to have relevance for them. And for Charlie today, there was relevance.